I'm a prisoner in my own home. We were afraid to answer the phone. I can't sleep at night. I had nowhere else to turn. I was going to leave the country. My wife was going to leave me. I sat at home with a gun. I didn't know how I was going to get through the night. Then I saw my children and I couldn't do it. This is what's said to me every single day by people. Sooner or later, if you're a human and you're raising a family and you're living in this country, sooner or later, something's going to happen that's going to interrupt your economic status. There's going to be a death, a divorce, a separation, a downsizing, a relocation, a medical emergency, the furnace breaks, the car breaks down, the, the roof leaks, whatever. These things happen in life. You need that little extra cash. And you say, well, <laughs> look what I got in the mail today. I'll just use a thousand dollars of it. Well, that's when the problem starts. And you'll never, ever get out of the debt. Never. I opened my office in February 17, 1997, with an ad in the paper. And I had the word debt upside down. Big letters, black letters, debt upside down. You know, is your world upside down because of overwhelming debt that you can no longer manage? And I got 20 phone calls. The second phone call was a woman named Cleva May. She had borrowed $10,000 from Fleet Bank. And she lost the tenant, and she could no longer make the payment. They threatened to file a judgment against her, which they can't legally do. They threatened to put a lien on her home, which they can't do. I said, these are severe violations of your rights. I sued Fleet Bank, I sued the collection agency, and I sued the collector. We zeroed out the debt, and I got her $4,000 by enforcing rights that she didn't know she had. Nobody advertises them, nobody publishes them, and nobody raises their hand and say, we do this for you, except our law firm is now doing that on a regular basis. How do you stop this groundswell of consumer crusading? Get rid of the lawyer. You get rid of the lawyer. Because it was always a slam dunk. The collector would sue the consumer who couldn't afford an attorney. It would not even appear in court. It would be a default judgment. Many judges have sanctioned me, fined me. How dare you raise that defense in my courtroom? Fine you. You know how much I've been fined so far in the last year? What do you think? By judges, various judges. Come on. A million dollars. No, a million five. <laughs> Is the court playing the role of the angry parent? Yes. You have gotten this credit card. You didn't deny you got it. You used it. You didn't deny you used it. And you took money. And now you're not paying it back. You owe it. You lose. This one judge fined me $850,000 in one day. The law requires a full hearing if you're going to fine a lawyer. Asked me if there was a hearing schedule. Come on. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> no hearing. This is a new American way. In 1999 alone, we saved our clients $26 million. How many people do you represent? Around about, I don't know, 12 to 15,000. How many? 12 to 15,000, growing every day. Credit card companies have a scheme to keep people in debt and to keep them in debt to their company. A scheme where you're paying them money and you keep paying them money. You're borrowing money from them to pay them. They want you in debt. The credit card companies want you in debt. Why? They want the minimum payment. They don't want you to pay the bill off. If you pay the bill off, they cancel your card. How come they never asked you for more than the minimum payment? 
They want you to be an indentured servant for the rest of your life with them. That's what they want. How long do you think it would take to pay off $7,000 at 21.9% interest if you were making the minimum payment? 143 years. It takes 143 years. And you end up paying approximately $76,000. The profit comes from the interest and all the little other fees and charges that they tack on. They have a whole litany of tricks. Clients come into my office and say, I can't do this anymore. I'm paying $1,200 a month in minimum payments. I have nine credit cards. I owe $40,000. It just keeps going on and on. I don't know what to do. I, I mortgaged my house twice. I'd taken my IRA account. I don't have it anymore. I borrowed all I could. The education money for our children is gone, and I still owe the money. I tried consumer credit counseling services. I said, I know. I said, it doesn't work. It's part of the same network. It's part of the same group. You're never going to pay it off with consumer credit counseling. And you don't. You know the consolidation loan you went to get? You didn't get it. You say, I have great credit. A plus on my credit report. Why, why can't I get the loan? You told me if I paid my bills on time all the time, I have great credit. And I do. Here's my credit report. That's the lie. I don't care what your credit report says. It's irrelevant. I'm not going to give you more money. I'm not going to give you more debt because you probably can't pay it. Now, you went to Citibank or Chase Manhattan Bank or Fleet Bank for that loan. They said, no way. You got too much debt. Guess what's in your mailbox when you get home? The same bank who will not give you the loan because they know your debt to income ratio is too high will give you a pre-approved credit card. That's why dogs get credit cards. That's why children get credit cards. Five, six, seven, eight credit cards from the same bank. We have this huge bowl of credit cards that clients used to bring in while they were with us. They just get them by the dozens. They know how much debt you're carrying. They know it. But they'll give you the platinum card, the gold platinum card, the millennium card, and the gold gold card. And when you get the fourth card, you say, I can't afford this. And guess what? Well, you know why you use it? You can't make the minimum payments on the other three cards one month. So what do you do? You take a cash advance on the millennium card to make the payments on the other three cards. <laughs> 